Hello and welcome to my video on secondary maths manipulatives. In this video I'm going to be discussing the power of zero pairs, mainly with algebra tiles, but I'm also going to be using some double-sided characters. Uh, previously in my lessons I've been using my homemade algebra tiles, which you can see here. I've been using these mainly at the beginning of factorising quadratics as a demo and I would explain this to the students but then for the rest of the lesson we'd be focusing on the abstract. Uh, I would also use these for to demonstrate completing the square for example and that would be it. Okay, It would just be at the start of my lesson. However now I can see the value of getting students to play around with these algebra tiles themselves and also not to be constrained with positive representation only which is another part of what I did. So I'm going to introduce zero pairs first of all by using double-sided counters. Double-sided counters are used in many primary schools. So we have a yellow on one side that represents one and on the other side of the counter it's red and that represents negative one. If we have a positive one and we add a negative one that will give me zero. So we call this a zero pair. So I'm going to give you a first example of how we can use this. Five subtract negative three my first example so we will get five yellow counters and then we can have as many zero pairs as we like on the table as well so here I'm just going to be using five clearly we only need three but this is to show that we can have as many as we want because this is always just going to be zero if they are pairs so on the table, all I have here is a total of five. I have five plus zero. So now we've started with five. I'm going to subtract negative three. So I'm going to remove three of my negatives. And now I can see that I have a positive five and a positive three. I still have two sets of zero pairs. That's just zero, so we can just get rid of those. So we know now that five subtract negative three is equal to five plus three, which is eight. And there are many connections students can make from this. One more example of using zero pairs. We have minus five subtract, minus four, sorry, subtract minus five. So I'm going to have minus four and then I'm going to use zero pairs again. So I'm going to have five zero pairs. So again, we can see on the table, all I have is a total of negative four. I have four, negative four, and then I have five sets of zero pairs. So I'm going to subtract negative five. So I'm going to remove five negatives. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm left with negative four, add five. So we know then that negative four subtract negative five is equal to negative four plus five. Students can then create zero pairs where they can. So we've got four zero pairs, zero, we can get rid of that. And that will give me one. Moving on to using zero pairs with algebra tiles for solving linear equations. I'm going to start with this equation, 10 plus x equals 4x plus 1. I would usually represent this in class using a bar model, which I'm going to show now. Bar models are absolutely fantastic and I would not leave them out even if using algebra tiles as well. It's good for students to be able to represent more in more ways than one as well. So on one side we have a 10 plus x. And on the other side, we have four X's. So the X's are the same size, roughly. And we have a one. So students, most students can see clearly without any trouble that X equals three. Uh, I do like um, using zero pairs in algebra tiles though, because it explains the step a little bit better. Um, and also it helps when you get to negatives. So I'm gonna demonstrate with algebra tiles. So here we have 10 plus x and on this side we have 4x plus 
plus one. So the first thing I want to do is make the number part on the right hand side zero. So I'm going to add a negative one and then I must do the same to the other side and always have students write down their working as they go along. So what we've done here, we've added a negative one and we have 4x plus 1 and we added another negative 1. Students can write it this way or I know a lot of students prefer to write it like this. Negative 1 underneath. So then we see we've got zero pairs here. So that will disappear and that will also disappear. So then we are left with 9 plus x equals 4x. So now we want to make the x part on the left hand side zero. So we're going to add another negative x to that side and a negative x to the other side. So we have added a negative x to both sides and that gives me 9 equals 3x, 0 and 0. So now all the students have to do is group your x's or group the units to the x's. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And we can see now that x equals 3. So for my next example, I have a negative x in the equation. So using the algebra tiles, I want to make the left hand side, the numbers here, zero. So I'm going to add two positives, two units. Then I must do the same on the other side to make sure that my equal stays true. And then students must write down what they're doing here. So uh, they can either write in a line or they can just write it underneath. It's up to them. So we have added two to both sides and then we can see that we have zero pairs here. So they will disappear and that gives me 3x equals 12 subtract x. Now we want to make the x's on this side zero. So I'm going to add a positive x and a positive x. So again, we have add an x to this side and add an x to this side. We have zero pairs here, four here, that stays the same. So then we have four X equals 12. And again, all students have to do at the end is group them. And we can see clearly, hopefully, that X equals three. Next up, I have a grouping example that will also show collecting like terms. So I'm going to build this group, first of all. So we want 3 plus x, and then we want another 3 plus x. Then we have a subtract x, so we add a, my, a negative x, and that equals 3x subtract 2. So we're going to tidy both sides up. And straight away, even before we do anything to either side, we should identify that we've already got a zero pair here, so we can remove that zero pair. So writing our working, that would give us six plus two X subtract X equals three X subtract two. And once we remove the zero pair, we are left with six plus x equals 3x subtract 2. And then we will continue the same way as before to eliminate, to make the numbers on the right hand side zero. So we add two here, so we add two here. So that is zero. So we are left with eight plus x equals 3x, we're going to subtract an x, that will give me 0, subtract x, subtract x, so we have 8 equals 2x, and grouping again will give me x equals 4. So the final linear equation I want to show is 10 subtract 2x equals 4 subtract 3x. At this stage, if students are confident with their algebra tiles, they can just remove four from both sides and remove the negative x from both sides. I'm just going to continue using zero pairs though here. So we want to subtract four x from this side so we get our units zero. 
and then we do the same to the other side so we've got three new or four sets of zero pairs from both sides that will give me six subtract two x equals negative three x then we do it exactly the same for our negative x's we make zero pairs by adding two x to both sides zero zero so we are given six equals negative x this is where then students a lot of students have issues with negative x they're, they're not sure what to do you can do quite a long-winded zero pairs here so we will add x to both sides again so that will give me six plus x equals zero and then we will subtract the six x from both sides however what we can do is because students should be used to now that when you multiply by negative one it gives you the additive inverse and in that case students should know that you just flip one side if you flip one side over you just flip all the tiles on the other side as well so we can clearly see here that x equals negative And finally, I want to show these two examples of quadratics and factorizing. Usually I have used algebra tiles for factorizing, but only when these are positive. They are, again, very powerful using zero pairs for the negatives. So students will try to make a rectangle here. And clearly they won't be able to make a rectangle. However, again, using zero pairs, we can have as many zero pairs as we like. So on the table, we still only have a total of x squared plus x subtract six. So now the students can use zero pairs anywhere they like to try and make their rectangle. A lot of students will make a rectangle like this. However, you must stress that this is not correct because the zero pair here is together and that will just disappear making an incomplete rectangle so you must have all the positives together here and the negatives here and just complete your rectangle like so so now students can easily see that we have x plus three along the top and along the side we have x subtract two and finally, we have the difference of two squares example. Uh, we have x squared and th nine negatives. There is no way students will be able to make a rectangle or a square out of this. So now we again introduce our zero pairs, as many as we want. So in total on the table, we still only have x squared subtract nine. And now students can attempt to make a square, remembering that we have to have our positives together on one side and our negatives on the other side. So now we've made the square, we can see that to factorize x squared subtract nine, we will have x plus three and x subtract 